Hello, live from our little Wits headquarters in Chelsea, New York City. Uh, with you today is Chloe and Vanessa from PDPU. So, with without further ado, without further ado, 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 we have some special guests. Uh, they are, they know themselves that a little thoughtful design, when it comes to events, can go a long way. Long way. Uh, and. Michelle Thorne has designed such wonderful large-scale events such as the Mozilla Festival, and John Gottfried has designed such events as HackCon, where he brings together uh, all sorts of hackathon organizers from colleges all over the country. Um, but they're going to take away their learnings from doing all those things and tell you how you can apply it in your living room this weekend for your Munch and Make. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you guys off mute now. I guess, I guess we'll allow you to speak. <laughs> John, and then Michelle, if you, well, first of all, what's your favorite food, and how would you hack it with little bits? Yeah, uh, I have a huge sweet tooth. I love baking. I love baked goods. And so I want to build a, a baker bot that is like a robot that makes cookies. Um, I, don't, I don't exactly know how it would work yet, but I really want to build it, and I think that it would probably be the most delicious robot ever. Mmm, a sweet robot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nicely done. Yes. How about you, Michelle? I'm a big fan of Nutella, and I've heard that you like it. <laughs> so maybe I would need a, a vehicle that would spread my Nutella, and then maybe in, for an extra extension, it would deliver it from the table to my mouth. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> uh, when each of you have designed and attended so many events. Tasty events. Tasty events. Now, what, what event of all of the events that you've been to has changed your life? How and why? So I think that uh, the event that was probably the most impactful for me was this event called Startup Bus that I did back in 2011. And the reason that it was so meaningful is because it... Uh, it really like pushed me outside of my comfort zone, and it created these like really strong bonds between all the people that participated in the events because we were forced to like learn from each other and depend on each other and help each other with all this crazy stuff that was going on. And I just put the link to the startup bus in the chat so you guys can see what John's yeah. talking about. I love the idea of a bus. Um, They're bus entrepreneurs. <laughs> Um, yeah, how about you, Michelle? Hey, um, actually, there was an event that's very much like a, a make and munch. Um, so a few years ago, we gathered in a, in a maker space here in Berlin, and the idea was make something for a dinner party, and it kind of was a similar theme. And um, actually, what was really fun about it was spending the day making all sorts of like crazy utensils and, for example, like a collaborative a bib that like connected people as they ate. They had like a shared bib, that <laughs> which made it quite different. Like <laughs> so, it was, the idea was like, how could you make a dinner party where you not only have a great time, but actually brings people together in really unique ways? Um, and what I loved about that was like we had fun, like all the people there preparing the dinner party, and then we opened the door to like neighbors and people come stopping by. Um, and I think that event was really transformative because I got to play with Arduinos for the first time. I had never seen them, or I'd seen them, but I, it was the first time I sat down and played with them. Um, and also that it became a real spark for like a sustained uh, activity there. It actually helped like kickstart um, like a, a makerspace. And so anyway, it was cool to see that like sometimes a really magical event connects people in a beautiful way, and then people want to actually sustain that work and that community. Um, and uh, great events can do that. That's awesome. Um, speaking of like dinner parties, um, how do you make people um, comfortable in events, right? So like, how do you how do you design events to get, let's say, the introverts or the shy people to participate and have a, a, a wonderful experience? Yeah, I think as an event host, you kind of you your job is always to be aware of the psychic <laughs> realities of the different people at your party. 
So you do want to, I think it helps to prepare in advance different kinds of activities, different kinds of things. So different people will grab, you know, if you have a party at your house, you know some people will hang out in the kitchen and maybe help with the food and other people will want to play video games in the living room. Like, I think as the host you want to prepare different kinds of activities so different kinds of people can get involved and then as a host also just like check in like how are they doing and maybe even especially if someone's um, shy or nervous or not really like maybe new to the group like even taking them aside to make sure they feel like extra welcomed or maybe can introduce them one-on-one -on -one to somebody so they feel less you know intimidated by a bigger setting. One of the things that uh, I really like that you said like introducing them one-on-one -on -one, because that's one of the like best strategies I've seen is it's like taking someone who's new and introducing them to someone who may or may not be new, it doesn't really matter, but building that like one-on-one -on -one personal connection makes someone a lot more comfortable. Uh, the other thing I think is um, creating like a kind of like public acknowledgement that there are a lot of new people and that that's totally cool. Like at the beginning of all of our events, we like ask everyone who's new to raise their hands and it's always like 60% of the people. And so you look around and you're like, oh, like it's not that weird that it's my first time here. Right? There's a lot of other people that are in the same spot. And then give all of those people somewhere to go connect, right? So like, hey, like if you don't have people to work with, like come here and we'll gather everyone and like introduce you, right? So making it like very public and very, very just kind of well known way. And for our own community here, we have an entire track for noobs. Yeah. And we there one of the rooms in the breakouts is Revenge of the Noobs and it's the most popular the most popular one. So we're very noob-friendly here <laughs> than anything. Um, yeah, most definitely. And I think like, it, that is such great advice. Mm -hmm. I think it's thoughtfulness is like a, probably the most important uh, thing if you're an event host, like being constantly thoughtful and, mm -hmm. and aware of like, you know, people in the room that might not, you know, might not feel like extrovert enough to, to go talk to somebody else because it's super stressful going to an event and not, not knowing anybody going by yourself. How do you... How do you get folks, this is two questions in one, so how do you get folks to, A, mix with each other, like how do, you, how do you get folks to get up and meet someone new and talk to more than one other person, and how do you get folks to give feedback to each other? When do you tell people to ask for help? Um, I mean, I think like what you guys did in this call is great, like I think there are lots of different icebreakers you can try, and depending on your group, Different, different icebreakers will be more appropriate, but it's always fun if you have a game or even just a, a fun, light question that helps people kind of open up or say the first thing, because sometimes it's always the, fir it's the first thing, like breaking that ice, literally, like that makes it um, easier to participate. Mm -hmm. um, and I also really like stuff that has people pair up in the beginning, so it depends maybe on your group size, but even in small groups you can just say, like turn and talk to your neighbor and tell, you know, maybe share a funny joke or show them how to do something they may not have seen before, like a new way to tie their shoe or something. <laughs> like, there, there's like lots of light wing things you can do that help to get those interactions going. Um, and then I forget what the second question was, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to follow up on that because something that I'm really impressed with with Mozilla events, I've been going to Mozilla events for like four years. Uh, I was a, I that's was, how we met. That's, it's how we met. We met at MozFest four years ago. <laughs> when we made a, my first 3D object. Uh, <laughs> um, but something that I really appreciated at the Mozilla Festival was the spectrogram. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what the spectrogram uh, prompt is like? Sure. It's, yeah, the spectrogram is a, a fun idea from this group um, that Mozilla uses also in this group Aspiration um, developed, where you are asking your group a controversial question, and you point to one side of the room and say, if you agree with this controversial statement, you can stand way over here, but there's also the spectrum of opinion that can go to the other side of the room where you can disagree with the statement, and somebody can, and you can stand anywhere in between. Um, and what's really great about if you ask that question, it's not just like yes or no or where do you stand, but also as the host you can also ask questions about why are you standing there, and if somebody says something particularly insightful or funny or convinces the other people standing in that line of opinion, then you can move towards them. Pretty interactive conversation by just your body, by just moving to different places in the room. Um, and we can share a link, I think, um, to, in the chat with, the, with how to run a spectrogram, if that's something that would be fun for your guys' events. Yeah, how about you, John? Like, do you have any, any activities like that, that you, like your go-to activities? Um, 
Uh, one of my favorite new icebreakers that someone taught me at uh, HackCon, actually, is people bingo. So basically, you like find out something about everyone there, and you put it on a bingo card, and then you give everyone this card, and it says stuff like, uh, cook sous vide, or builds robots, or like is a chess champion. And you basically have to go around and fill in all of those spots by talking to people and figuring out like who they are there. And so it forces you to ask like really weird questions, but it also forces you to have conversations with people in like, you know, a fun way because everyone's doing it. Everyone's like trying to figure out like what like odd fact is true about each of their like fellow participants. Um, and people had a ton of fun with that, so I really really like that one. Uh, I've also seen the spectrogram one. That one's like really really effective, especially in big groups. I think. Um, oh, good. Yeah, one of my one of my favorite um, icebreaker activities, I think, is it's super simple, and I, I think I learned it from Aspiration or somewhere at MozFest, um, Michelle, which is just stand up and talk to somebody you don't know. Like it's the most simple activity ever, but it's super effective because again, it kind of forces you to get out of your comfort zone and and start talking to somebody you haven't met before, which is. I think one of, of the purposes of events, making new friends. Um, so yeah, I talked to Vanessa in that Moss Fest, and here we are, and here we are. And we made a 3D Marge Simpson, <laughs> and it was happily ever after. And it was happily ever after. <laughs> um, I guess, yeah, like to, to that question, though, like when, when do you ask for help mm -hmm. in an event, right? Um, when do you encourage others to kind of stop and share and, and ask for for help and feedback, and how do you maybe like organize that and frame it? Yeah, I know that in the event guides for Invent Anything, Chloe has put together some guidelines for putting in hourly check-ins um, that people are going to work for a while and then sort of stop and then share. But I thought maybe you guys would have other strategies for how to stop and, and thoughtfully ask for feedback. Um, I think one thing that's helpful is like at the beginning of the event, if you can designate helpers beforehand, so you might have people who are maybe more experienced and eager to help each other, so Chloe, did you just change your cup to like a <laughs> oh, It's cute. Um, <clears throat> so like if you have somebody beforehand who's like, um, or a group of people who like can maybe wear like a funny costume or like have an extra visual indicator that they're eager and available to like give more help. Um, then they can be uh, spread out throughout your event, and you know you can people can ask them one on one, and maybe you'd have to don't be so they won't be as intimidated to ask like the whole group something. Um, so I find that one works really well. Um, and then also if you can you can also close out your event or have like w within the event even just like uh, quick demos. So there are like fun different formats to quickly demo what you make like. Either people can sit down almost like theater style and you can make it into like a bit of a show where you have like an announcer and different like people coming out and showing what they made and make it like kind of like, yeah, very hammy. <laughs> um, or you could also like go through like a rotation and maybe people just have like a little table where they are showing what they made and people can kind of walk around or you can eat the food that you made and like walk around and look at other people's stuff. Um, those might be just very quick DIY techniques to get people asking help and then showing what they made. Um, one of the things that I always like is, uh, like, you have the publicly visible mentors. Like, we've identified them with, like, hats or bandanas or, like, name tags or something. Um, but one of the things I really like is sometimes we encourage them to, uh, like, if they know one of the other participants has the skills to, like, act as a mentor in a specific subject, to actually, like, guide people to their, to them. So, like, someone comes to me as a mentor, and I'm like, oh, I really know how to use CloudBit, but so-and-so, who's also participating in the event, also really knows, like, I should just introduce you to them, because then you're building, like, connections between all of the different people who are kind of building stuff, and it builds, like, those lasting relationships, and I really like, like, that strategy a lot. Um, the other, we've also tried a lot of other stuff, like digital mentorship, so you can, like, post a question and, like, a live form that will alert everyone, or you can um, kind of go out and like go into like different chat rooms or for different subjects. Uh, the demo thing um, is kind of interesting. We've uh, started like, doing like science mini science fairs where everyone gets to like set up what they're doing and show it out what their like other people are doing, 
and it starts a lot of conversations about like, oh hey, I see you're doing X, like I really am into that too. We should work together in the future, and it really gets people talking about it and giving each other ideas and like constructive criticism and kind of building like uh, you know future plans for how they can keep working. I. Uh- one more question. Uh, I know that you both are extremely curious people. Uh, when I was hanging out with Michelle in Berlin, she was like, you know, I've been going to cafes and doing Code Academy sessions. And I know that John is always teaching himself something new, playing with a new toy. Um, what kind of environment do you try to, to make or nurture to learn the most or to learn new things? And how do you know how you learn best and how do you create that environment? Yeah, this is a trick I learned from uh, Peter View University. So thanks, to, uh, Vanessa. Um, is actually is the practice of um, learning out loud. And so I, I really like the the idea of like um, if you want to learn something that you can use blog like your own blog or Twitter or any any channel basically online to to learn out loud. And so you can talk about like what you want what you want to learn and then what you found and you can ask questions and even if I mean, actually, what I found is like even if nobody answers me, the act of writing that out has been was has been really really positive and helps to reflect. And then there's always really great, like, you know, um, serendipitous things that happen when you post things like that. So I just think, yeah, even you know, if there's areas that interest you or something that you want to try to learn how to do, even just say like, I want to learn how to make, you know, that Jonathan's like baking bot. <laughs> that sometimes even talking about that out loud will help you'll kind of get like some momentum around that and, and good links and tips will come to you. Yeah, I, I actually really like the idea. I, um, one of the other things that I have tried a couple times along those lines that I find works really well is take an idea of something you want to learn and plan on writing a tutorial about it for people who have never done it before because you're forced to like take it, learn it yourself, to put it back into terms that like someone who's never done it will understand, and it really kind of makes you think through all of like the bits and pieces of it that uh, you're learning it. You know what's important, like what are the key facts, like what are your stumbling blocks, all of that. So I love that idea, Michelle. That's that's one of the reasons why we organized the forums in the way that we did, so people could post their Q and As, and you know if they're having issues with the cloud bit, learning how to use the cloud bit, and learn from each other, sort of. Yeah, first time with it. This was this was wonderful. I feel we could keep talking for a all long, day. long time all, all day. day. Um, such love sauce here. Yeah, yeah. Such community driven love and, sauce. And such such knowledge from Michelle and John. Yeah. This has been this has been amazing. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back. Um, we went away. We munched and make. And this is what we came up with, a synth toaster. Because why not? Why not? Because we can make amazing things when we make together. When we make together. High five, um, Chloe. High five. So. so this weekend, munch and make. Take a mundane object that is a munching object. Could be something from your kitchen. Could forks. Be forks. Could be a toaster. Could be cups. Could be a cups, like a coffee mug. Um, could be peanut butter. Could be accessories for a dinner party. Mm-hmm. Um, we'd love to see what you make. Don't forget to post on the project page. Every week we do amazing uh, community hall of fame, amazing projects there. We highlight the best projects also from Invent Anything. Um, and take lots of po- pictures, post them online, Twitter, hashtag Invent Anything. We're going to retweet and show a lot of love. This weekend is going to be. It's going to be amazing. Amazing. It's going to be amazing. Amazing. And we'll see you next week. It's April's Fool. Um, it's no joke that the course is not going to end. It's not going to end. It's not going to end. No, this uh, community is going to keep going. It's amazing. We've been really touched and inspired by all of your efforts. And yes, community loves us. And let's keep this momentum going yeah. to keep making We'll it see you next week with new guests uh, from the Little Bits team. Amazing projects. And yeah. Community invent anything in us. What? Ciao, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.